Dia Social Watchers, dear Roberto Vicio, thank you for inviting me to address your assembly. As many of you know, I am a great supporter of Social Watch. I believe that this accountability movement that you initiated within and after the World Summit for Social Development in Copenhagen has certainly proven its worth. And my civil society soul is fully, fully with you. Thank you for the magnificent job you have done in monitoring the commitments of governments. You have persistently reminded them, as well as international organizations, business and NGOs, of the need to act on them. The major conferences of the 1990s defined agendas for transformation from the UN. It was a time when governments began to question prevailing dogmas with a sustainable development vision. Many governments were then ready to give leadership in shaping new approaches. But the commitments of the 1990s became increasingly subordinated to the demands of a model of deregulated globalization that has become increasingly unbalanced, unfair, and I believe politically unsustainable. Today, the courage, the resolve, and the space to think and act differently is much, much weaker. So this puts a premium on the role of civil society and social movements as agents of change. And today, Social Watch is more necessary than ever before. Dear friends, tempting as it is to look back, we must take stock of the current reality and move forward. The recent financial and economic crises are clear manifestations of an inefficient growth pattern that has created indecent levels of income and wealth concentration. Not surprisingly, there has been a distinctive weakening of a human rights approach. We know that the transformations we wish to see in our societies must be driven by the force of social movements and of social struggle. Social progress demands constant vigilance, constant activism. The Millennium Development Goals helped to bring a certain focus and a means of measuring progress. And we can chalk off some successes in the reduction of absolute poverty since 1990. But at the same time, the facts are that globally, 3.5 billion people have the same income as the top 61 million people. Even here in dynamic Asia, we see rapid growth in output, but slow growth in decent jobs and wages. Also, more than 200 million are officially unemployed worldwide, including nearly 80 million young women and men. And youth unemployment rates are sometimes seven to 10 times higher than the rate for adults. And the number of workers in vulnerable employment, 1.5 million, and those working but surviving on less than $2 a day, some 1.2 billion, are on the rise again. This is certainly not the path to sustainable development. People are rightly demanding more fairness in every aspect of their lives. In three quarters of the 82 countries with available information, a majority of individuals are getting increasingly pessimistic about their future quality of life and standards of living. Too many feel squeezed, including the middle classes. At the same time, they see many governments with either too little strength or too little will to rein in the unaccountable power of financial operators who have come to wield so much negative influence on our societies. On the one hand, we have financial institutions deemed too big to fail. And on the other, many people who feel they are treated as if they are too small to matter. This can't go on. The financial and economic crisis shocked the world into realizing that change was essential. Yet there are many, too many indications of a return to business as usual. And this is a recipe for disaster. So how can we move forward? To begin with, 
by putting decent work and social protection as key objectives of sustainable development growth patterns. Many, perhaps most of the tensions we are experiencing come together in the world of work. Decent and productive work is central to human dignity, to the stability of people's lives and families, to peace in our communities, as well as in our societies, and to strong, sustainable economic growth. Let me quote, poverty anywhere is a threat to prosperity everywhere. This principle of the ILO's constitution reflects, as you have said, the right of all people not to be poor. And every person living in poverty knows that working out of poverty, a productive job, is their best chance at a life with dignity. Labor is not a commodity. Work is central to human dignity. If you want peace, you must cultivate social justice. These are the operating principles of the ILO. And the labor market is a gateway to social justice when it respects human dignity, guided by the notions of freedom, of equity, and, and equality. The ILO and its agenda are at the heart of real social processes. We were born as an institution in 1919 out of the social struggles of the end of the 19th century. In the unfolding Arab revolt and revolution, we have heard impassioned calls for jobs and social justice, freedom and democracy, all embodied in decent work. Moving towards a different pattern of growth with social justice is technically possible, yet we know politically difficult. Too many entrenched interests. And that's where you are key. Social Watch can play a major role in driving this agenda. It requires, for example, a new policy mix that generates higher levels of investment in the real economy, in particular small enterprises, and not in financial products that do not create value or jobs. Yields a fairer relationship between productivity gains and salaries produces income-led growth and strikes a balance between export-led strategies and domestically driven demand. Enables all to participate through relevant training and educational opportunities. Allows for balance and synergy through policy coherence, for example, in the creation of green jobs. Places rights at work and social dialogue at the heart of policy making. And this policy mix must be guided by the objective of sharing the benefits of globalization equitably in a context where voice, participation, and democracy flourish. This year at the International Labor Conference, which is our, our annual conference, we had two major breakthroughs that can be important elements in a new paradigm for growth with social justice. First, the new Convention on Domestic Workers brings the system of rights to the informal economy. Domestic workers have long mobilized to get the protection and respect to which they are entitled, and now we must ensure that the convention is ratified and implemented. And secondly, we are moving towards approving next year an ILO standards on a universal social protection floor to promote social security strategies that are protective and empowering, productive and sustainable, and which stimulate aggregate demand. Today, we must remember 80% of workers have no access to social security. This is set within the framework of broader national strategies to reduce poverty and formalize informal employment. These, I believe, are strong building blocks of social justice. And I invite you to mobilize around them, and your support can be invaluable. I also want to mention that there is a nascent decent work movement that coalesces around the 7th of October each year, which has been declared by the International Trade Union Confederation as International Decent Work Day. And you may wish to join in. Dear friends, let me conclude. We have all been inspired by the courage, the clarity, the energy of Arab youth. 
that turning dreams into reality is a task for all of us. And the direction of change is never guaranteed. We must all be watchful. We must drive change towards balanced and just outcomes. And we must all be held accountable. The current growth model that has evolved since the early 1980s has become economically inefficient, socially unstable, environmentally damaging, and politically unsustainable. So it must be changed. But getting there will probably lead to increased social conflict. But as we know, history tells us that out of social struggle can come positive change. And as you know, when you choose to challenge prevailing dogmas, when you choose to defend human rights, gender equality, and other values that are under assault, when you want to make societies better, you also make another choice, the choice to swim against the tide of entrenched interests. So it is difficult and it will always be difficult. And that is why commitment, conviction, persistence, the positive energy not to be discouraged is so essential. And you all have that. And that is the spirit of Social Watch. What you're doing is vital. I wish you the strength and imagination to carry on your invaluable work and invite you to work with the ILO towards a new era of social justice. Thank you so very much.